we will go ahead and have our scripture reading for this morning. Scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, the first 13 verses. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten young women took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, the bridegroom is here, come out to meet him. Then all those young women got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our, our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us you had better go to the dealers and buy some more for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other young woman came also saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he replied, he replied truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is one of those texts where, as a preacher, you look at it and you're like, hmm, hmm. It's a weird text. And uh, what I do is I, I save my sermons and I looked at what I preached on three years ago on this text and I can't believe what I preached. <laughs> it didn't give me any help for today. Um, it really didn't. <laughs> Because this text is, I'll be honest with you, it's just plain weird. It's strange, okay? We have these 10 young women who have oil lamps who are going to meet a bridegroom. And depending on what uh, version of the Bible you read, they could be virgins, they could be bridesmaids, you know, and we read that five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. The foolish ones were described as being unprepared because their lamps ran out of oil and they forgot, or you could say they were too lazy, um, to go out to the market to buy some when they had the chance earlier in that day. They tried to pawn some oil off the wise, and the wise ones refused to share with the foolish ones and tell them to go out in the middle of the night to get their own. Meanwhile, the bridegroom comes, he fetches the young women for the wedding banquet, the foolish ones, they've gotten their oil, they come to the banquet, and they are refused entry. The bridegroom responds to their knocks by telling them he doesn't know who they are and to basically go away. And Jesus ends this strange parable by saying, keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. <clears throat> First of all, we need to look at this text as an allegory. It didn't really happen, okay? Because, think about it. A marriage ceremony happening at midnight, okay? As a pastor, I would not agree to do this type of wedding ceremony at midnight. I will be in bed, thank you very much. You also don't have wedding parties that typically consist of 10 bridesmaids? You think my dad would pay for that if I called him up and said I was gonna get married? Yeah, dad, I got 10 bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus used this text as a teaching tool, not as something that could happen in real life. So before we dive into this, we need to take a look at where we're at time-wise with Jesus. So in the previous readings of Matthew, we've looked at Jesus teaching at the Jerusalem temple. He teaches, he gets into several arguments with different types of Jewish people, Pharisees, temple authorities, a lawyer, scribes, and Sadducees. Pretty much everybody you can think of. The Jews were getting ready to celebrate Passover. There's a lot of people in the city, and Jesus knew that his time of his suffering and his death by crucifixion was coming very quickly. So he's got a lot he has to do. At this point in the text, we have Jesus who is exiting the temple and he's still in the vicinity of Jerusalem. He is now on the Mount of Olives and he's with his disciples. We don't know if anyone else was with him, but he was at least with his disciples. And the disciples asked Jesus a very important question. Keep in mind, that we are chronologically in Holy Week. Jesus entered Jerusalem in triumph and the people thought that he was going to come in and liberate Jerusalem. So the disciples basically want to know a timeline of events. And they say to him in chapter 24, verse 3, tell us then when this will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. In other words, they are saying, Jesus, look, you came in to Jerusalem in triumph. Time is ticking. You need to get your battle armor on and defeat the Roman Empire and free Jerusalem so we can live in peace. However, Jesus does not promise them the peace that they are looking for. Jesus launches into a teaching about what will happen after he leaves earth and what will happen in the future when he returns to earth. And even the Apostle Paul in his early letters to the church really thought that Jesus would come again during Paul's lifetime. But that didn't quite pan out. And unfortunately, I've heard more than one sermon from, and I'll call them people, who have used these teachings to instill fear into people, to scare people, to get them ready for Jesus' return to earth. Jesus will return to earth. He will. And we need to be concerned, but not full of fear. We need to be concerned. What we need to be concerned about is what to do while the coming kingdom of Christ is delayed. Jesus explains what we should be doing in the meantime. How are we to be prepared for Jesus' second coming? Because he won't come back as a baby. He will come back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. What are we to do to be prepared during the delay? Well, we're an impatient people. We don't like to wait. We certainly don't like to be delayed. People get nasty when they get delayed. 
I saw this as I would be driving to seminary on Interstate 695 around Washington, D.C., and see road rage happen all the time when people felt like they were being delayed by somebody else. Airline flights get delayed. And we read these crazy stories about what people do when they get angry about the delay. We now have apps on our, t on our phones that tell us when our packages are arriving from Amazon. And we get irritated when they get delayed. In today's text, we have five women who understand what to do during the delay. And we have five who do not. In the text, there are some symbols that are used because remember, this didn't really happen. Okay, but the symbols are symbols that Christ wanted us to be mindful of. The wedding banquet is the symbol of the kingdom of heaven and the long awaited bridegroom is Jesus Christ. The midnight arrival of the bridegroom is symbolic of Jesus arriving back to earth as Messiah at an unexpected time. The cry of the foolish bridesmaids, Lord, Lord, and the sad response of the bridegroom of, I do not know you, are tragic. And they're echoes of Matthew chapter 7 when Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And Christ will turn away the evil ones, saying, I never knew you. Some things to notice in this text. First of all, notice that all of the young women or bridesmaids are asleep. All of them are resting and are not working. All of them are taking a nap, the wise ones and the foolish ones. Jesus ends the parable with telling the people to keep awake, even though none of the ladies in this parable are exactly awake the whole time. And I think one thing to consider with this parable is that the wise bridesmaids are described not as awake, but they are described as being ready, as being prepared. Just what is it that they are ready for? Is it for the bridegroom? Because even the foolish bridesmaids are eager for the bridegroom to come. And they all want the bridegroom to arrive as soon as possible. So what's the difference between these two sets of young women or bridesmaids? I think that the wise bridesmaids were ready in a very particular way. They were ready for the bridegroom to come because they were prepared for the groom's delay. The wise bridesmaids brought along an extra flask of oil to indicate that they were prepared for the bridegroom to come either early or late. If the groom had arrived on time when the bridesmaids expected the bridegroom to arrive, then all of the bridesmaids, right, all of the foolish, all of the wise, everyone would have cheerfully greeted the groom and merrily waltzed into the banquet and begin eating and drinking. If the bridegroom would have arrived when they expected the bridegroom to arrive. But that didn't happen, did it? The bridegroom, like the kingdom of heaven, did not arrive when they wanted him to arrive. He was delayed. 
and still is delayed some 2,000 years later. Dr. Tom Long, a world-renowned author on books about preaching and a wise biblical scholar, wrote the following comment about this text. He said, the wise ones in the church are those who are prepared for the delay, who hold on to the faith deep into the dark night, who even though they see no bridegroom coming, they still serve, they still hope, they still pray and wait for the coming promised victory of God. Some will give up because they're tired of waiting. The delay is too long. So they let their preparations go. They turn away in despair and discouragement saying, the bridegroom has left us standing at the altar. The banquet is off, there is no kingdom come. Life is just one cursed thing after another with no goal, no end, or no hope. Pastor Tony Evans wrote the following. It was not long, too long ago that I was on a plane headed to a destination where I had to speak. As we got closer and closer to the destination, I noticed that we were not headed down toward the runway as we should have been by that time. The pilot came on and informed us that we were in a holding pattern. We were circling the area. We had not been given permission to land. We were told that we were going to have to wait until such a time as the control tower gave us permission to land. He continues saying, I remember that I began to get very frustrated at the fact that I was in a holding pattern over which I had absolutely no control. I don't mind holding patterns that I control because I can land anytime I want to. But when other folks are in the cockpit and I am in the dark and in a holding pattern, that can be a very frustrating position. It's not a good feeling to be on hold and not know how long it will last. Now let's address the pink elephant in the sanctuary. Maybe you don't see it, maybe you don't know what it is, but it's here, it's here. The pink elephant in the sanctuary has a label on it and it's called control. We like to think we know best. We're smart enough, we've got experience, we've got age on us. We like to be in control. It's not a good feeling for us when we are on hold and we don't know how long it will last because we are not in control. So our response is to stop preparing because the hold has been going on a really long time. We don't like to be in a delay. 
We don't like being delayed because when we're delayed, we are not in control. We look forward to Jesus returning to earth to make everything right because right now this world is a really crazy place. We're tired. We're hurt. We are suffering. We want the delay to end. And we want to be in control and say when that delay will end. What would happen if we were like the wise bridemaids who were always prepared and said, you know what? I don't know when the bridegroom's going to come. I'm not in control of that. But I'll let God be in control of that. What if we handed over our control to God. Scary? You bet. But to give our lives to someone who freely gave his life to us is something that we need to be prepared to do. As Dr. Long said, the wise ones in the church are those who are prepared for the delay. In other words, those who are prepared to give up control and to trust in God. Even when we don't see the bridegroom coming, we are still to be prepared by serving, by hoping, by praying, and patiently waiting for the promised victory of God, because it will come. Hold on, be prepared, lose control. Don't be deceived when people say Christ is gonna come at such a day, at such a time, at such an hour, because no one knows. So we need to be prepared. Be prepared for the delay. The delay is okay. We don't know why there's a delay. But we know that God, in the meantime, holds us in his hands. Keep the faith and keep the light on. Amen. <laughs>